<clears throat> Yay, just so I don't forget. Oh, how cute! You only have one cat? No, I have a hundred cats. <laughs> oh, a dream. <laughs> this guy just jumped on me on Avenue 28 like a couple years ago. And you adopted him? Yeah, I couldn't find the owner. Oh. <laughs> I literally jumped on me. He's like, please take me home with you. Yep. I know yesterday we saw a husky on Avenue, like a block away from our house. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, should we take it home? And now Valentina, she's just like me. And she's like, yeah, let's take it home. But I guess it had its owner somewhere down the block, but we were like. Oh, is that the one that always goes around the block that everybody, is it like white? Yes. Yeah. So there's some like construction site or something. I can maybe there's a couple of them and then everybody thought it was lost and then some people were like no that's the neighborhood dog it hangs out around S&M yeah like it, it's owner like I guess I don't know if it has an owner and it just like lets it out and it comes back but it's white and he has like a little tag uh, I always get freaked out you know when you see the dog and it starts jumping in the street and you're like oh you know they're not obviously I think a, a dog that was walked or gets walked or whatever it knows to the route you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. when they're like oh it's horrible oh, seeing them but, almost get hit and then you try to save them and they run away or try to attack you that happened to a dog uh on the five on one on the on on a freeway here in east la it was going it was like going into one of the exits onto the freeway and someone got off their car to try and save it but it got scared so it just ran deeper into the freeway and it was like this little chihuahua and like no one could stop it. It was so sad. Oh God. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh man. All right. So we have our, so we can start the meeting now. It's 9.05. Okay. It's just, uh, so is everybody a panelist? It says two panelists. All right. We're all good. Okay. Oh, wait. Is Gil still on here? Yeah. Right. Oh, but Gil, you're a panelist. Do you want to be a panelist? I am a panelist. Oh, it's so weird. It's telling me you're not. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so let's start the meeting now. I'm gonna okay. turn off my camera, maybe. Just so oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll leave the camera on. Yeah. <laughs> so um, well, as needed, if you need to turn it off. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order at 9.05. Let's do roll call. Uh Sarah Clendenning. Present. Uh Gil Arevalo. Arevalo. Am I saying it wrong? My dad, when he came here, he changed our name. He pronounces it as, as and, and I do it with my grandchildren, Arvello. Oh, Arvello. I'm sorry. Arvello. Arvello. I'll practice. Thank you for correcting me. And Selena Ortega, present. Um, so non-agenda, agenda, public comment. It doesn't look like anyone's here. Does anybody else have anything that they wanted to discuss that's not on the agenda? Mm. Oh, yeah, maybe this would be a good time to bring up um, that email from, and I'm probably gonna say her name wrong also, Lane from Empower, from the clerk's office. Lene. Yeah, Lene, oh, is it Lene? Are you talking about the old email? The, the one where she said that our first choice for the elections location is not available, so. Oh, we can't use the senior center? Why? <laughs> can't can't Why use the senior center, center. She said it's closed. It's closed to the public, which is very oh, odd. Well, yeah, but uh, that's, uh, that, that, the, the elections are long ways away. That's in May, and they're they're opening up. They're, they're opening up the one in uh, Cy Cypress Park already, so. Uh, yeah, no, that's totally like misleading and wrong. So the elections are always held at the senior center because that's where people know to go to vote, right? That's so what worries me. So if it's not there, it's going to be a disadvantage to our community. Also, the senior center was open for the uh, CD, you know, the most recent city elections. And I went by there and they have a sign up. It says, uh, sorry, no public restrooms available. 
due to uh, the Lincoln Heights Rec Center winter program. Mm -hmm. So the rec center has been using it. So there, you know, it's like, listen, that's where our meetings were for our council. So we'll talk to you in your issues and see what's up. You right? know what? Oh, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, like when I worked there for the elections for the, um, you know, the, the elections that just passed, yeah. I don't know if it was the rec center worker or who, but I was like, hey, are you going to open the restrooms? Because they had like handicap restrooms that were closed. And I was like, um, I think there's persons, you know, like with disabilities who might be needing those. They're like, oh, no, they can use the other ones. Oh, oh, oh. No, Parks and Rec is really uh, doing it. They're really doing it right now. Oh, okay. Is that it? So uh, should we email Unisys? Yeah, we'll email Unisys. Unisys. Oh, okay, that's a good because idea. Because it's like, it's not like we're being territorial over that space, right, Gil? It's like that is the de facto space we use for all of our municipal elections. Yeah, even if we were just to like inform people of the election date, they would know where to go because that's yeah. always where it's been. And it has the parking there. I mean, it has the parking there. You go to the dollar store, you go to the CVS, you go there. So um, it's doing a further disservice to our community if we're excluded from using that space. And it's in May, May 20th. Or I don't know, that's when the election day is or whatever. So. Do you want to draft the email or should I draft it? Um, I'll draft it. I think uh, Unisys has to still, they're still working on their staff. So I don't know who our area rep is. Oh company. yeah, right. I have heard a thing or two about that. Yeah. Gil, do you think that sounds kosher? Because like we have to submit a form. So you had already submitted that form, Selena, correct? With the yes. request for, the, okay. <clears throat> That's so weird. And it's pretty, it was pretty uniform as in like other years. And I think that's something we had discussed in the, in the meeting that it would be kind of cool to have it somewhere else, but then like not because a lot of people are familiar with the location and it's ADA accessible, you know? Yeah. And also it's like, if it's at, say it was at Boys and Girls Club, you know, when we think about our other big spaces, well, that's a um, private place, right? So it's like, I would prefer to have it in a municipal place. We already lost our offices. We already don't have our offices, right? So it's like, listen, and who knows if they will approve our future meetings at the senior center. We're that's, what I, that's what I'm saying, but you're right. You're right. Oh, did you see that the, the email that the, the open meetings are gonna be started March the 1st? No. Yeah, yeah. there's an email this, this morning. Uh, if you look at it, I received it. Oh, I got it yesterday. Or was it yesterday? I mean, well, I saw it today. <laughs> I thought there was a motion where with the city where the councils can choose, right? Like we could choose to have in-person or virtual, right? Or something. So yeah, you know, it makes me sad because I know sure. I know that there are people who like depend on the on the um, you know, like the Zoom now. And I and I know some people are not gonna be able to go like to in-person meetings. It makes me sad. It's about accessibility and like post COVID with the, what is it, the financial downturn, right? It's like, if you go, first of all, Gil, wasn't there an issue like with the meetings, we go down to the senior center, we have to wait for somebody from Parks and Rec to come with a key, right? And then they sometimes were really late. For the senior center? Yeah, somebody was telling me, I think it was Ben, he was like, yeah, you know, because it's like the neighborhood councils uh, the city says we have access to city properties and stuff like that to hold our meetings. We just have to ask, but we have, for some of them, you have to pay a fee, right? For them to set up or whatever. So that's what we do with the senior center. And I believe it, you know, it's not cheap. It's like a hundred and something dollars, but you have to wait for the person to show up with a key. Mm -hmm. and let everybody in. So it's like, get home from work, right? Like, like we have the meetings at six, right? We could push it to mm -hmm. seven, like full heights, but it's like, get home from work, get dressed. <laughs> Look presentable. Go down to the senior center. Hope people show. Hope you make quorum. Uh, the, hope the developers show up from Venice. You know, like driving across town. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. You know, um, whatever. We'll figure it out. But uh, really, it's a you know the community. Oh. People want in person meetings, of course. But, Hybrid uh, would be cool too. You know. 
with a board as big as ours of 25, see, we have one of the biggest boards in the whole NC system. So it's like, it really does get to be pretty intense um, coordinating. Cause you don't want to buy like pizza loca for like a ton of people, right? And then nobody shows up. Yeah. <laughs> or you're bored, you don't make quorum. Oh yeah, that's, oh yeah. And then people have to like take the food home. I don't think we're allowed to buy food anymore anyway. Oh my God, that's right. And you know what makes me, and last thing I'll say about this is like, I'm just so mad that like COVID is being normalized. Like, you know what I mean? Or not yeah, just COVID. It's going to be like the flu uh, uh, now or every year. The, yeah, the strains are going to be, uh, and you're going to, and, uh, you know, it's uh, going to be a recurring thing all the time and you're going to have to get vaccinated. The yeah, but shot. people get sick even though they get vaccinated. Everybody's getting sick who is, you know, all my neighbors and stuff. My dad, they're all getting sick and they're vaccinated. Yeah. And I, and I say this because yeah, like it's normal to get sick when you, when you get vaccinated, it's just, it's not, it's supposed to prevent you from being like super grave or whatever, but like, I've been sick so much this year at work for that same reason, because all of this, all of these like flus are, they're being like normalized and it's like, it's not normal to be sick so often. And then I get other people sick and it makes me feel so bad. You know what I mean? It's just, it's sad. So I and. Mean, they took away that COVID pay, the 40, the 40 hours. We don't have that 2023. So if people get COVID in 2023, oh, well, you go to work with COVID. So sad. I know people in the neighborhood who went down to General Hospital to get a vaccine, right? Well, I, I don't go it's out at all. General Hospital is turning everybody away. Oh, they're, they're doing them for free? No, they're turning everybody away. Basically, if you go down to general, like you think, oh, I'll go to general hospital, get, you know, I have Medi-Cal, I'll go get a shot, right? This is happening like this whole past week. So a couple of people hit me up. If you go to general hospital and you talk to this guy and you say, hey, where's the COVID shots, right? You go through the back or whatever they go to, they say, go to building B or D or whatever. So you go there and then there's a sign that says COVID vaccines available only to patients of our of usc lausc medical center so if you're like don't go there or whatever not on their thing you can't get a shot or a booster or none of them that's weird because like they technically need to service a whole <laughs> portion of la county you know what i mean it doesn't make any sense that's anyway. it that's very weird anyway uh I thought they were doing them also for free, like at CVS. They're not doing that anymore. No, well, they don't have all the stuff. So it's like if you go to CVS or Rite Aid, they have the booster shot, but not the first shot or whatever. Oh. So I don't know what's going on. That's terrible. Oh, but 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 they're talking. Oh, well, now I'm going on a. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Yeah, go yeah, yeah. But what it is is that like, uh, who knows in the future? Maybe there'll be another thing, and they'll have to shut down the in-person meetings, right? We don't know because the COVID stuff's still on the table here as like an element. Yeah, and then there there are people who like really are immunocompromised that continue to be, you know, and can't get sick. Yeah. Like can't afford to get COVID, you know, the way other people can and just, you know. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they like to bring up? Okay, community and board announcements. Hmm. Actually, the, what we were kind of discussing kind of goes into this. I don't know. I don't have anything else to mention. What about you, Kim? We have a couple of meetings this week. This week, you know, we postponed oh. the general board because of uh, city council still, they actually didn't start meeting until last week, the 11th or something. Um, but uh, it's hard to get any business done. So we're going to have our meeting on Thursday, the 19th as our general board. And the XCOM is going to be tomorrow, I guess, because it's MLK on Monday. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a planning and landing meeting on Wednesday, I think, if I can line all that up. But uh, and that's that. And that's my announcement. And then, so we, this next week's kind of busy. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have, we have three meetings. Well, you have three meetings. One, two, three. Oh, God. <laughs> It's just, you know, it's like between, like think about in-person meetings just real quick, going down to the senior center, all that, and then posting, Brown Act, you know, it really is like a hustle. 
having the you know meeting and then running before the deadline to hang it up, doing the social media posts, sending it to the city. Uh, it's whatever. It's like I look at city council and I'm like, well, are they abiding by the Brown Act? You know, on a lot of their stuff. Well, they have they have people that they have runners that do all of the posting or you know. <laughs> But that's a good question. Yeah. Sometimes I think the city comes after the NC is harder than it comes down on itself, of course. Probably maybe set an example. Um, okay, anything else anyone would like to mention? Yo. Nope. Let's go. Okie doke. So um we're gonna move on to item number five, A, neighborhood council elections, timeline and potential outreach strategies. Really need your guys' input on this. So the elections are May 20th. So candidate filing opening opens on the 20th of this month, a few days or the day after our, our next meeting. Candidate filing closes March 6th. So January, February, March, a whole month, an entire month. Vote by mail request opens March 21st. Vote by mail request closes May 1st. So there's a lot of time in between those dates. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the actual election day is May 20th. Um, okay, I have a thing. I have this. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not going with the rules here. Sorry. What do you mean? Go for it. So, okay, there's an issue. Now we need to talk to Lene. Mm -hmm. So historically with NC elections, when you uh, sign up or you vote or whatever, your information is harvested by Empower LA. You know how it doesn't follow federal laws or, you know, whatever. It's like they have their own voting system. There have been instances where Empower LA has provided certain groups, these master lists of voters right um like uh they did it down it was like a lawsuit like with downtown and stuff now <clears throat> we have to make sure first of all if you voted in the last election are you going to just automatically get a get a ballot or do you have to request it again you know do you have to re-register to vote right or since you're registered like with a regular election do you just get the ballot you know do we have access to that information yeah, they're not going to be forthcoming with it, but uh, they have the master list of all the contacts of the voters who voted last time. So they use that strategically for whatever they want to do. But we have to just make sure, you know, it, there's a further disservice to so-called democracy when this voter system they have set up for NCs does not mirror that of like federal elections, right? Mm -hmm. people will be like what well i registered last year because it's a big process right your mm -hmm. id all this stuff right which it's not even federally legal to have to do that but people will then expect they'll say oh well i'm already registered i'm going to get a ballot anyway if they have to re-register again they're going to be like all confused right so um it's like three levels of confusion because there's the federal elections where you are or not are not registered Mm -hmm. you already think you know and then there's the nc system so maybe we, can, maybe we could like talk about that when we talk about our elections and like make it clear because i can see how people could get confused you know yeah I mean? it, it seriously makes people not want to vote anymore when there's all these different voting systems and honestly one of the one of the reasons i think it's good that we're waiting for these months to start talking about the election is that I feel like when you shove something down someone's throat so much that it just becomes static and they like they forget about it you get you get me like if we would have started talking about like elections in October elections in November election people are just gonna they're gonna go over them dude we have vacancies on our board that we can actually fill the vacancies that we have now the current vacancies including the 2025 20, ones and 2023 ones can only be filled until 120 days before an election so that means january 20th so we do have many 2025 seats we have 2023 seats which will be up in may or whatever but if anybody wants to be on the board they can be on the board now but election is like a competition right so it gets like all pumped up um 
person. But, yeah. So it's like, it's just like, listen, you could do, we're doing the city's work here. It's like, first of all, it's like vote by mail. It's like, oh, you know, one thing to go put your ballot in the box, right? Mm -hmm. Come vote today at the senior center, blah. That's one thing. But then with the vote by mail, which this is going to be heavy vote by mail, it's like, dude, we already had elections, you know, last year and the year before, or whatever. Like, if people are registered, just send them a damn ballot. Like, don't make them go online and register again. <laughs> well, we can ask, right? Yeah. We so, can ask. Right, that's all I have to say. Yeah. And it's like our stakeholder requirements for RNC are different than other NC. I mean, it's kind of the standard one. It's like, a lot of boards get taken over by developers or private interest groups, right? The stakeholder definition, people that don't live there. So ours says, yeah, you have to live there and show ID. And then the city actually goes, looks up your address to make sure you live there. Mm -hmm. Empower LA even disqualified uh, some of our candidates who actually live here who were candidates. Oh, I heard about that. Because they use like their driver's license had their mom's address and then the other address is like on another street in Lincoln Heights. Like you can't have like two Lincoln Heights addresses. Oh. So anyway, uh, there the city. So so our stakeholder status is kind of like or our affirmation, right? We don't have self affirmation like other neighborhoods. So that's why it's already like many levels of difficulty. You have to show your ID and wait and fill out a form versus Elysian Valley you just check a box that says yeah I'm a stakeholder so I mean that has its pros and cons though right so we can't yeah your board could just get taken over by private interest but we don't have time you know we're not we're not in we can't change our bylaws now or none of that stuff so the stakeholder requirements are going to be exactly the same as our bylaws which makes it you know it's like a lot of work We should really find out. We should really find out if people need to re-register. Yep. I think that's the first step. What I do you mean pre-register? I don't understand. Uh, re-register. So for example, like if I voted by mail in the last elections, do I need to re-register again? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I, and I'm, you know, uh, listen, uh, this is just like a, a lot of uh, federal, state, county, and everything else like that. Uh, uh, there are certain uh requirements on every level and you can just like every state and in county and everything else can can add things to their process it's not illegal or you don't go strictly by the federal mandate or anything else like that if a if an, uh, a governmental body uh is going to have an election and they they that they do they have uh, and set up which is the city clerk and everything else like that the the, the voting method that's it Right, but the city clerk retains, see the city clerk has their own voting system that's not beholden to federal laws. So, but they've been harvesting, they own all the contact information of people they sent the ballots last year. So if we're just wondering if, follow, if it follows the federal model where, well, you only register once and every election they send you another ballot, you don't have to keep doing it again. So that's what we're gonna uh, check with the city, check with, check with Holly Wolcott and see uh, what the methodology. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, static on my side. Uh, it says your my internet connection is uh, unstable. I don't know what the deal is, but every once in a while uh, I lose the, the, the sound. So. Uh, okay, sorry. But okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. And uh, you'd have to find out, but uh, 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 the his, there historically uh, a, a lot of uh, neighborhood councils are uh, very unstable. Uh, they they uh, go back and forth. There is a, a lot of uh, of uh, neighborhood councils that uh, can't even keep their membership. They have a, or a big turnover and everything else like that. And so I don't even know if if city clerk has records of last year and. And uh, the the mobility of of, uh, of uh, and probably Legan Heights has a, a, a big turnover rate also, so it's uh, it may not even be useful. No, the city clerk has every every voter uh, registration form 
uh, all that information from that. And then we had to go and collect our actual ballots from them. Yeah, so, and we had a really big turnout the last time. Yeah, it increased like 2,000%. So uh, anyway, maybe, so we have some attendees and now, <laughs> we have two attendees. Um, we could uh, open it up, maybe like, uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to see if the attendees have anything to say maybe, or comment on the item, but um, we're still on the item. Selena, you take it. So, uh, so we're on item 5A. Uh, we just went over the, the elections timeline. If anybody would like me to review that again, please let me know. And we're, oh, we have a question. <clears throat> uh, Sharon Brewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of talk there, Sharon. Yes, thank you. Um, I am interested in you know your elections and stuff like that. I'm on um, the seat and neighborhood council. Our elections. Sorry about the dog. Um, but, um, and we have elections the, um, on Father's Day. Lucky us, yes, on there. The thing is, one, has your city clerk um, election person visited your neighborhood council or been in contact with you? Because a lot of your questions that you're asking will be addressed. Yes, you have to re-register. Um, basically, I consider NC elections as fake elections. I, don't, I know it's not a good thing, but obviously not a um, real election. So the capacity of the city clerk and, and stuff like that. But I know that you're going to have to re-register on there and you're going to have to ask for the vote by mail. So um, on, th on that information and stuff. But I think the main thing is who, if you know who your city clerk contact is and whether or not they've come and talked to you at, at your board meeting and having them possibly attend your election, committee meeting, they will be able to go and answer a lot of this stuff. I don't know whether the city clerk retained those contact informations that were from the last year or not on there. So they may, you know, on there. So, but like I said, I'm interested in um, going in and going to different meetings and it gives me something to do on a Saturday. But we haven't started doing our stuff yet, but it's just, like I said, Find out who your election um, administrator is, because they also have to make sure your place is ADA compliant. They're going; they will go and um, come and inspect it. They're already looking at us, and our, our meeting, it, our thing is in June, and they've contacted us. So that would be a, a thing that might be very helpful for you to answer, like the questions um, on there. But I'm going to stick around because I think it's great because I want to see what you guys are planning. So I appreciate you letting me speak. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Um, let's see. Did anybody else on the attendee side have anything else they wanted to bring up uh, on this item? And right, uh, Lene is our, is our outreach person, right? From the clerk's yeah, office. Lene Basulto. Basulto, I couldn't think of her last name. She did. She actually did a presentation for us in December. I mean, yeah, the N Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council has been around since 2002. And uh, I mean, I'm not sure if we had our elections. We've had the voting at like Lincoln High School, you know, very controversial stuff, but usually it's been at the senior center. So now the city's saying, oh, the <laughs> we applied for that same place that we use all the time. And then it's a city property. And now, now they're saying we can't use it. So they're kind of just like, what? Um, and I want to say exactly what seats we have, because we have two, you know, it's half of our seats. Other NCs, they don't have it like this. They don't have half their seats up for election every other year. They have like full board elections, right? I was looking at LA32, full board election. So it's like we've got our treasurer, our vice president, and then each one of our area th area reps, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Yep, each one. And one uh, business rep and two, no, wait, two CBOs and one business rep or something like that. Yeah. Um. So, did you want to just jump to five C to discuss the the 
ballot model? Uh, sure. Okay. So, uh, so the seats that are up for election, vice president, treasurer, youth rep, sub area one rep at large, sub area two rep resident, uh, three at large, area four resident, area five at large, area six resident, area seven at large, business representative, and two CBO positions. Um, that's a whole lot of seats. So we got, yeah, so we're, we'll, okay, I don't want to jump onto another thing. Just to be clear, because I reviewed this with the information that we have on Empower and it, and it, um, everything matches, right? It, did you find any inaccuracies? I mean, Empower LA is like really, the city itself, like when I send them a roster, it takes them a long time to, they'll like mess up and stuff. Um, no, you're right. It's uh, two executive seats, seven, whatever's, and then, um, yeah, and then the three different, like uh, two CBOs and one business rep, and then the youth rep is just an ongoing thing. Now we have vacancies on the board now. We have until the 20th, you know, if anybody wants to fill a vacancy, they have until the 20th. And so that could be for, you know, in terms of keeping quorum with our board or, what, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so since we've like have so many seats and stuff, and, I've been trying, you know, we've been trying to get the word out about filling vacancies, but what we now need to do is sort of cheerlead about an election and the election, pump up election. And I do want to say that on social media, especially, I know, I know people see the messages like, hey, we have open seats and we have vacancies. It's seen, you know, and some people apply and some people can't. But I know it's there. You know, sometimes we don't get we don't get much feedback, so we wonder like, are people seeing the messages, or do they see that we're that we have vacancies? But they see the they see the messages. It's just you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, uh, Gil. Yeah, I, I was. I you know I have a question uh, and uh, maybe an idea. Uh, we do have uh, people on uh, uh, vacancies on on the on the on the fifth. Uh, uh or, or what is it 25 uh and uh i'm just just to generate interest uh or try and encourage people to come out rather uh yes we can't uh, appoint people at uh, a certain number of days before the meeting but i'm just wondering if if, if it's possible to put uh, the vacancies uh, of the 25th uh, on on this ballot uh, and uh, and so that uh, perhaps we can get people to uh, uh, see it on this ballot and uh, maybe come forth and uh, and and run, put their name in. It's just a thought, you know, because we do have uh, uh, vacancies on the on the twenty fifth. You mean the twenty? You mean twenty twenty five? Yeah, we, it's uh, where you go for four years, right? So th this one here, this is the twenty third. We'll go what to the twenty twenty seven. Twenty twenty three. Why are you saying twenty third? You mean twenty twenty three and twenty twenty five, right? Right. Okay. That okay. So, uh, well, I mean, right now it's like half our seats are up for election for twenty twenty three, and that election is on May twentieth. Mm -hmm. So the those. Basically, if people want to apply for the seat, they go on their Power LA site and sign up or whatever. Uh, we could do something where it says like, hey, here's a list of all the seats, uh, you know, with all the descriptions, you know, like how I keep posting it. But um, yeah, uh, just so they can get a comprehensive view, objective view of like how, what exact seats there are. Yeah, because it's really like the city doesn't have like when you go to Empower LA and it's like, apply for my NC election, choose your NC. It doesn't tell you all the seats that are available. Like it's super shady. <laughs> um, so we have to, yeah, make that clear to the community. But right, like in the, in like, when they go into our profile, our neighborhood council profile, the vacancies are listed on there, right? Yes. Yeah, they, for the most part, yeah. When, I just have to make sure the city like it's, I have to double check, but it doesn't by default send you there. It sends you to like uh, 
register. It's like make an account, register to be a candidate, and it says it doesn't have a drop down where it's like choose which seat you want. It's like right in here what seat you want, so people don't, won't automatically know, and even if they qualify for that seat. We just have to make sure that people know the, the stakeholder qualifications for each seat. There are, there's a lot to be desired from the city clerk. Uh, last last year, citywide, uh, the turnout for vote was was negligible compared to the previous years. And it's just because they took over and uh, they botched it all up for the in many respects. Lincoln Heights turnout was uh, over about like 2000% increase because in the previous year, it was only like 17 or 30 votes people got. Mm -hmm. And this year it was like, well, it would have been like 400 votes each. <clears throat> so that's a lot of votes. All right. Okay. Um, does anyone have anything else they'd like to add to this item? We're discussing 5C. We're reviewing the, the um, ballot voting model. Oh, Gilbert? I'm fine. Oh, your hand is was still up. I'm sorry. Oh, put it down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you on the phone? Yeah, I can't put your hand down. You <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, did we want to? Did we want to vote on this? We have to vote on it, right? Vote on what? On the voting ballot model, or do we just discuss it and tell her it looks fine? So. Okay, so you're saying like, what does the ballot look like and that people are going to be getting? Yeah, so this is it. Like, so we have to approve this and send it over to her before the 18th <clears throat> and let her confirm that it looks correct. Oh, with the actual seats. Yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, um, seven uh, area rep seats, two, two CBO, one business rep, and then secretary, or sorry, treasurer and vice president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do we need a motion and everything or do we? Um, I don't think. Okay. We're just gonna, okay, yeah, uh, move. Do you wanna move? Okay, so I move to approve the voting ballot, uh, the ballot voting model for the 2023 um, elections. I second, I second it. Okay. Okay, and we'll just go for a majority vote. Okay, so all in favor to approve the, the ballot voting model. Aye. Say aye. 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 Now, wait a minute. Uh, Sarah, where's Fernanda? I thought she was a member of this committee. No, she's not. I have to, uh, her name is by default on the um, Zoom. So I had to start the Zoom. I'm on the committee. Esmeralda, you're thinking about Esmeralda. Oh, yeah. Oh, she didn't, she didn't say anything. Okay, so all motion the approved. Opposed. All opposed? <laughs> No so, one? Okay, so motion passes. Okay, votes. So our next item, so did, did you want to jump back to 5B? So uh, discussion on possible budgeting and advertising. I feel like this is something that's like, it's a formality, we have to talk about it. I think we need Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council advertising products like pens and things those are great to have when we go and we have like a table out at an event not necessarily for elections do you know what i'm saying i mean the city well, we did, 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 there wasn't uh, a, a bunch of money uh, allocated for the outreach and everything else to buy trinkets and everything else that or yeah, whatever like tote bags or whatever has, in any has case, it been like, has it been done uh the city itself is kind of pulling the carpet out of under us by taking away our historic voting area, voting place, right? So it's like, let's talk about that. Let, let me see, uh, are we, are, are, is neighborhood council in an exhausted state? What? Why are you asking these questions? No, we're like- Well, um, we're because we're talking about funding. That's why, we, uh, so uh, if you're in an exhausted state, state, of course you can't spend anything. Why would we be in an exhausted state? I think they would have told us that we were. No, they, they, I got an email saying that they were in a, because, no, uh, the, because the MAR, the MARs have not been uh, uh, That's because the new producing the, everything. And Power LA's money person is new and doesn't know what they're doing. That's why. But that's not, not part of this committee. 
So um, uh, we're talking about funding, Sarah. Okay, I, I it, and and if if I, we're talking about funding, we have to see if we're in a position to fund things. I'm all in right. The executive committee, sir. I'm the president of the council, so I'm telling you that um, do not worry about that because that e see this is another failure of the city for sending okay. other board members executive committee correspondence. Okay, so uh, there, we're not in exhaustive standing. So there. <clears throat> um, so I think I think it would be a good idea for I mean, and it was just I mean, let's focus on advertising, okay. advertising or promoting the elections. I feel like our strongest point has always been social media, Facebook, Instagram, posters, some posters. I feel like is are the only print and we've gone so far by doing that look at for example our candidate forum that took place was it march april we did that with a few posters and basically all social media outreach and we had a great turnout and it was a great event um so maybe we could focus on that right now oh also, I'm curious. So, if somebody is, uh, oh, we have to check into the bylaws. If some, if somebody's running for a seat, can they be on this committee? <laughs> you know, your seat is up. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not sure about that person being on the com. If with the technicalities of the person being on the committee, I'm just uh, curious. If well, my seat is up too. Huh. Um. Or I mean, if somebody was going to run and then be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Oh, like they're, should check that. They're involved with the coordinating. Oh, exactly. Um, in any case, that's just some we should check for a well, Jose or something. We'll send an email to uh, Lene. Okay. Uh, so, what do you guys think about the promo, or do you do you want to? Um, do we want to meet again at another time and discuss it then? Um, so it, it, registration opens on the 20th. I mean, we can, we'll, we'll, so much promotion can just be done for free, like with social media and stuff like that. And we save so much like paper. I can't emphasize that enough. We're not yeah. contributing to the global crisis. And also like besides the youth rep seat, which is like always open pretty much. Um, it's not like we need to go to the high school and give out a bunch of pens, right? It's for people over 18 is the stakeholder thing, I think, or 16. So the time we had, the time we, you guys had that table, I, I'm saying we, and I wasn't even there. The time that I believe it was Fernanda, yourself, and someone else had a table that weekend, that was great. We like, should, we, that yeah, was, they're yeah. not, once, it's the high school students can't run for these seats. Unless yeah, sorry. the for the youth rep seat. Yeah, but that's not. Uh, I think because that always expires like every year, right? So yeah, I mean we could do a youth rep. But as far as like money goes, like making posters, right? We have the printer. We have the ink. Don't didn't we didn't we purchase a button maker? Oh yeah, we approved that. We have to go buy it. That's true. So we could do that. Okay. That still has to be purchased. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. You know, Pedro got this bag of like all of these things. His job gave it to him for Christmas. And it's, and I need to find the bag, but there's like some pretty creative things like a tape measure, a highlight. It was the things that I would have never thought of. And I'll email those to you. Like, we could just make maybe. stickers and seriously buy junk from the St. Vincent and just stick a Lincoln Heights neighborhood council <laughs> sticker on it, you know, like keychain, recycle product. Like, Lincoln Heights is epicenter of just, it's like the ocean, everything that fall, things that shot, fall off of shipping containers, everything washes up on the shores of Lincoln Heights. Like, oh, how cool. and just so much junk, right? We don't need to contribute to more junk in the city. You're right. What if, okay, but oh, like, just hear me out. What if on, on our buttons we have the Lincoln Heights whale? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then that's that would, right? That's a good idea. Okay, but I feel like this is more general and this is not just about the, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're talking about outreach and election. So it's like two big things. 
So for the elections itself, I mean, we could make a little video on YouTube or on, yeah, on YouTube and then Instagram, like, you know, funky little video, like run for your election seats, whatever. Uh, do your civic duty. Here's our yeah. seat. Yeah. Yeah. I could do one of those. Okay. And that would be pretty hot because then once you make the video, you can just splatter it all over the place. Huh. Okay, so are we gonna? Uh, we'll talk about the video at another time. But I agree. Okay, but should we start? Should we put? Should we start posting these seats on our social media to let people know candidate filing opens on January twentieth? I think we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic. Okay, so we'll start with that, and then we'll let them know that candidate filing opens on the twentieth and ends March sixth. So they have until the March sixth. Okay. To file. And then little by little, we can start bringing in the other information like vote by mail, registration, you have to register again. And we need to get the location thing settled, settled out with, um, with Unisys. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I muted myself. <laughs> but also the unhoused, we have a whole thing about like accessibility with voting, like a lot of our communities unhoused, right? It's like when you actually register with your stakeholder status for a ballot, you have to show an ID that shows your home address. And so we made a stink during, the, or, you know, a bunch of people made a stink during the last election, like, you know, what if you don't have a home address? And they're like, oh, well, you can call us personally or whatever, tell us your intersection. It's just all weird, right? Yeah, well, you know, that's what the county does with um, houseless persons. They use an intersection or a business that they're most closely associated with. But I'm sure, I think like if people just go on the voting day to the site, like a lot of unhoused people don't have um, an ID or anything like that. So, uh, cause it's just been swept up. So we could, uh, just uh, we just have to double check if they have any new like 2023 equitable like voting rules now like newer hot new equitable voting guidelines. It would actually be very smart of them to have like a like a like a liaison that the day of focusing specifically on that. Yeah. Okay, so. Does anybody else have anything they would like to add to item 5B? Um, we're talking about promoting an outreach for the elections. Okay, let me know, Sarah, if we need to- There's, a, there's a raised hand. Oh. A... oh, thank you, Gil, appreciate that. Oh. Oh, do you want me to oh. go, Sharon? She's, she's a, I believe you're, you're allowed to speak already, Sharon, you can. All right. Thank you. Um, one, obviously, you need to differentiate between election and outreach because election has to expenses have to come out of election and and the generic outreach um, buttons sound really great. Um, regarding the homeless, maybe there's a way of getting out some kind of information that that where the unhoused can go to get ID because they can get just get the general ID, not a driver's license, just anything. And maybe it's like LASA or something like that. To and it, I think it'd be good even not having the election, just to let the the unhoused know where they might be able to go and get this. There are probably you know different community organizations that deal with um, the unhoused. Um, which I think is a great thing. And I think all neighborhood councils should go and, you know, try to help um, with them getting the, um, their ID and stuff like that. Um, and I know you mentioned about be, um, people running being on the election committee. The city clerk will probably say it's okay. My thought is perception and will, the people that are running for a seat have get information that um, 
the other people that would be running for a seat might not get, you know, how it is with city council and perception and stuff. And I think if there's a way of having people who know they're not going to run, um, not being um, involved with it, and the YouTube might be the same thing in that if you're running, you might have an advantage that your face is out there and, you know, perception again that even though that's the worst scenario, but you know how things are that, you know, somebody could go and say, well, you had an advantage because you did this and stuff. So, but learning a lot from here, you have great things. Buttons are always great. Um, so you have a well that you're um, like for Lincoln Heights. But anyway, thank you for letting me um, talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. Oh, Sarah, you know about the well a little bit more than I do. Yeah, it's our kind of mascot. It's a 12 million year old uh, prehistoric late Miocene fossil of a whale. It's the only one that exists in the world. That was found in the slopes of Lincoln Heights. Found in our hills in the 30s. And it was in the collection of the Natural History Museum since the 30s. And uh, so they have it on exhibit, I think right now, uh, LA underwater, because this was all underwater. So it's sort of that guy's been sitting there, it's a mammal sitting there for 12 million years. And so uh, it's a, kind of about, what is that word called? Um, not versatility, uh, sustainability, about the like tenacity, about the whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, people here aren't going anywhere. So I, no, one, no one really knew about the whale until recently, until. Yeah. It's like we're kind of in the press, you know, it's in the gangster movies. It's like, Bunch of, you know, low lives or something, you know, crime. And then we're like, well, we have the whale. And we're not only the first neighborhood in the city, in the Pueblo, but we got the whale. So we're proud of the whale. And the kids, the huge response. Everybody's proud of the whale. It, it was found right by Lincoln, right? Yeah, well, it was found. Um, we found kind of the exact coordinates. It's up at Flat Top, but down, it's like Alta, like the street that goes down. And there's kind of a big gaping hole where they pulled it out. Mm. like by thomas yeah where thomas kind of splits mm -hmm. like on the flat top yeah where that house is nice yeah cool okay thank you for your comment um does anybody else have anything they'd like to add mm. nope nope sarah you're good i'm good okay so then we'll we'll move forward with what we said regarding um, social media and letting everyone know about the vacant seats, candidate opening, filing, um, and closing, candidate filing, closing, um, and then the vote by mail registration opening date and the closing date. Okay, if no one else has anything else to add, um, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. It's 9.56 a.m. So you're gonna move. Motion yeah. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn our meeting. Second. I second that. You're motion. seconding. All in, uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 <laughs> all opposed. All opposed. No one. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> motion carries. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming into the meeting. Bye, everyone. Thank you for being here. Bye. Oh, bye. <laughs>